Hello friends, in this video we have brought a worksheet for you for quick calculation of balance sheet ratios. What we'll do is that we'll take a sample balance sheet. Now here is a balance sheet of a proprietorship firm. Now this sort of balance sheet we normally receive in banks when we receive a credit proposal for working capital, for term loan, for non-fund based limits or other credit limits. We need to calculate ratios on the basis of these uh, financials or balance sheet. So we'll use this Excel sheet or this worksheet for calculation of the ratios. I have already uploaded the Hindi version of this video some time back. Now this is only for my English viewers. So in case you, already, you have already watched and you have understood the Hindi version of this video, you need not watch this video again. Now let's begin. Now this is our balance sheet. We'll start with the capital. Now here we have to feed the capital amount. The capital here is 65.50 lakhs. In this uh, Excel sheet, we'll fill the figures in lakhs. So the capital in lakhs comes to 65.50. We'll fill 65.50 over here. Now here we have to fill reserves and surplus. Now, reserves and surplus we normally find in the balance sheets of companies. Now here we're talking about a proprietorship firm. So the reserves, reserves and surplus figure would be zero. Next, we move on to unsecured loans. Here in the bracket, I have written Q. Q means quasi capital. Unsecured loans can be divided into two parts. The part which we are treating as quasi capital or quasi equity and the other part which we treat as term liability or non quasi capital, non quasi. So the quasi capital part or the quasi equity part will be put over here and the non quasi capital part would be put over here. Now here the unsecured loans has been shown at 66.35 lakhs. Now, for example, the customer says that he will be, this amount will be retained in the business for a long time and this is not going to be paid back. Now, in that case, unsecured loan up to the level of capital can be treated as quasi capital. Now, because capital is 65.50 lakhs and unsecured loan is slightly higher than that. So in this case, unsecured loan up to the level of 65.50 lakh can be treated as Quasi capital. So here again, in unsecured loan, will feed 65.50 lakh, and in the unsecured loan, non-quasi portion will feed the balance amount of unsecured loan. So the balance amount of unsecured loan comes to 66.35 minus 65.50. What we can do is we can simply calculate it over here. That is 66.35 minus 65.50 lakh. So this comes to 0.85 lakh. Now here we have to fill the figure of term loan which is payable after 12 months. Now as we have already discussed in our balance sheet videos previously that the term loan amount outstanding in a balance sheet has to be divided into two parts. Now one is the part which has to be treated as current liability that is the principal portion of term loans payable in the next 12 months during the next 12 months that we have to take as current liability and that we have to fill over here and the balance portion which is payable after 12 months of balance sheet date has to be put over here. Now, first we have to find out the term loan, total term loan amount in this balance sheet. Now here we can see a car loan from ICC bank, which is of 12.07 lakhs. And then again, we have a tempo loan from SBI, which is 6.50 lakh. The total comes to approximately 12.07 lakh plus 6.50 lakh. Now suppose we fill the entire amount over here. So it comes to 12.07 plus 6.50 this comes to 18.57 lakh now, out of this portion some portion would be definitely be payable in the next 12 months suppose that figure is 2.50 lakh so again we'll put 2.50 lakh over here and from this 18.57 lakh we will sub subtract 2.50 lakh so the term loan payable after 12 months would be 16.07 lakh and the term loan payable in the next 12 months would be 2.50 lakh now in the next cell we have to feed the cc or od figures shown in the balance sheet now here we can see the CCL amount of PNB that is 110 lakhs. We'll fill it over here. Next cell we have to put the creditors figure. Creditors figure is over here 46.37 lakh. We'll fill it over here. Then we have advance, advance from customers. We, now this customer hasn't shown any advance from customers from the liabilities, liability side. So it will remain zero itself. Then we move on to OCL that is other current liabilities. So this expenses payable can be shown as other current liability. So put the figure over here. That is 1.05 lakh. 
defer tax liability again defer tax liability and, and defer tax assets are generally shown in the uh, balance sheets of company only so here we're talking about a proprietorship firm so we don't have any defer tax liability figure so the total of liability side comes to 307.84 lakh we just need to tally it with our balance sheet the so balance sheet liability side total is 307.84 lakh so our liability side is tallied now we move on to asset side first of all on the asset side we have fixed assets net figure so fixed assets net figure here, here is 30.57 lakh we will fill it over here then we move on to long term investments or loans to others now let's see if we have this figure on the asset side in this balance sheet now here we don't have any such figure so we can leave it as zero itself then we move on to fixed deposit now again we will have to inquire with the borrower whether the fixed deposits shown on the current asset side are pre-fixed deposits or they have been deposited with some bank as margin or security deposits. Now suppose the fixed deposits have been made for margin towards bank guarantee limit or LC limit or they have been deposited in some in, uh, to some government department as security deposits. In that case, we will have to take the fixed deposit figure under current assets. Now in case the fees, these fixed deposits are free, that means this, these fixed deposits have not been made for security deposits or they are not serving as margin for bank guarantee limit or LC limit or any other limit. In that case, fixed deposits balance can be uh, uh, clubbed with the cash and bank balance. Now here, after inquiring, we find these, that these fixed deposits have been made for margin towards BG and LC limit. So in this case, we'll take the fixed deposit figure over here, 12.17 lakh. That is 12.17. Then we move on to next part. This is security deposits and other non-current assets. We'll just find out if we have such figures in the asset side. If we don't have any security deposits or other non-current assets on the asset side of this balance sheet. So we want to move on to next column and uh, next cell that is debtors more than six months. Now again, debtors have to be divided into two parts. The debtors which are is outstanding for under six months and the debtors which are outstanding for more than six months. The debtors which are outstanding for more than six months have to be treated as non-current assets. Now from the borrower, from the customer, you will have to uh, take, yeah, you, you will have to obtain the age-wise list of debtors. Now suppose out of this total figure of 131.89 lakhs, 30 lakhs are such debtors which are outstanding for more than six months. So we'll put 30 lakhs over here and the balance of some debtors or balance of receivables will put over here. Now the total receivables, yeah, total debtors is, is, is 131.89 lakhs. So what we'll do is that we'll simply put 131.89 over here and we'll subtract 30 lakhs from this. So the balance figure comes to 101.89 lakhs. This figure will be taken as current assets in the ratios. Now we have to the advanced to suppliers figure advanced to supplier has been shown as 25 lakhs we'll put it over here then next we have the stock or the inventory figure stocks has been shown at 103.43 lakhs so we'll put it over here then we have the cash or bank balance so cash in hand is at 1.77 lakh and the, and the bank balance or the current account is 0 0.20 lakh so we'll total up these two figures, the cash in hand figure and the current account figure, and we'll put the figure total figure over here. So the cash in hand is 1.77 and the bank balance is 0 0.20 lakh. So total comes to 1.97 lakh. Then we have other, other current assets. What we can do is we can put this GST receivable under other current asset that is 2.80 lakh. Again, the deferred tax assets, we don't have any deferred tax assets in the proprietorship firm's balance sheet. So this will remain as zero. There are no intangible assets in this balance sheet. So this will also remain as zero. So the asset side total comes to 307.84 lakhs and which is tallied with the with our balance sheet. So now we have created all the figures. So here we can see that the worksheet has made some calculations by itself. It has calculated the net worth. It has calculated the adjusted tangible net worth. Adjusted tangible net worth is nothing but the total of capital and the quasi portion of unsecured loans. That comes to 131 lakhs. Then it has calculated the term liability which is the non quasi portion of unsecured loans and the term loan portion which is payable after 12 months. So this comes to 16.92 lakhs. Then we have the current liability. Under current liability, this, sheets, uh, this sheet calculates 
the term loan portion which is payable in the next 12 months that is 2.50 lakh then the cc or od figure the creditors figure advance from customers other than current liabilities so all these are taken under the current liability trail now the total outside liability comes to term liability plus current liability so this is 176.84 lakh for current assets under current assets this worksheet calculates your debtors outstanding for less than 6 months or up to 6 months advance to suppliers the stock figure the cash and bank balance figure and the other current assets so all these figures are totaled up and these are put over here and then we have the quick assets figure quick assets figure is nothing but current assets minus the stock figure so this comes to 131.66 lakh now here we have the all the important ratios calculated by this worksheet the current ratio comes to 1.47 quick ratio comes to 0 0.82 debt equity ratio comes to 0 0.13 UL by TNW or leverage ratio comes to 1.35 and the net working capital or margin comes to 75.18 lakh. So using this worksheet, you can cal quickly calculate the ratios and find out if the, in, if the loan proposal is doable or not. You can go ahead with this sort of balance sheet or not. Now we'll just try to make some changes in, this, in these figures and we'll see what impact does it have on the ratios calculated by this worksheet. So for example, Letters outstanding for more than six months is increased from 30 lakhs to 50 lakhs. Now, as of now, we see that the current ratio is 1.47 lakh. What we'll do is we'll just increase the debtors figure over here and reduce the debtors outstanding for up to six months by 20 lakhs. What will happen is current ratio immediately drops down to 1.35 lakh. Likewise, suppose we reduce the unsecured loan quasi figure. We reduce it by 30 lakhs. Make it. Sorry. We make it 35.50 lakh. And we increase the unsecured loan quasi figure by 30 lakhs. So, again, what we see is that the debt equity and the TOL by TNW figure changes immediately. So using this worksheet, you will quickly calculate the ratios. The link to this worksheet will be provided in the description to this video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye and take care.